Shalom, peace be unto you, and welcome to Secrets Revealed, the Holy Bible. Today we're looking at Numbers chapter 17. There are 13 verses. Verse 3 reads, One rod to the tribe, versus one rod for the head of the house. Verse 4, Be made known to you. I will be made known to you, versus I will meet with you. Verse 5 says, I will remove from me the murmuring versus make to cease from me the murmurings. So that is saying that uh, Yah, is, Yah Elohim, God is the one stopping the murmuring versus can you do it? Someone else do it. He's delegating that to someone else. Um. I will remove from me versus oh, actually it does say I will make to cease. So it is Yah doing it in both. Um, let me just write that down. So it is it is him doing it in both instances. Just to keep things honest. Okay, verse six. Aaron's rod or Aharon in the Hebrew in the midst of the rod. So it's possibly in the middle, his rod, versus among other rods. So that is a potential difference there. It's not exactly clear. Uh, we see in verse 7, for the first time, Septuagint is calling it uh, the tabernacle of witness uh, in the Masoretic. So the Septuagint calls it the tabernacle of witness. That's what it calls it. In the Masoretic, it sometimes calls it the tabernacle of the congregation. But here... It correctly identifies it as the tabernacle of witness for some reason. Verse 8, we see a significant difference in the rod of Aaron. It says it blossomed versus it brought forth buds. So it budded. Although, to be fair, it does say in it bloomed blossoms. So why would it just say it budded? Maybe it's talking about a progression, I'm not sure, but... In the Septuagint, at least, it is saying that it did blossom, meaning it, per, it put forth a bud, first of all, and then bloomed blossoms and produced almonds. So there's a progression here. Okay, moving on to verse uh, 10. We see it's to be kept. Lay up the rod of Aaron. This is to be kept as a sign for the children of the disobedient meaning their parents were the disobedient ones, so that these children may or may not be disobedient, and let their murmuring cease from me. Because uh, it says here, let their murmuring, let their murmuring cease from me uh, because of the proof of the rod of Aaron blossoming. That's why it would cease. And then they shall not die. Versus what it says here in the Masoretic, the rod of Aaron to be kept for a token against the rebels. And you shall take, you shall quite take away their murmurings from me. Uh, so Moses will take it away. Aaron will take it, take it away. No, that's not how it works. It's, as the Septuagint says, it will, it will stop because of this proof. It's going to shut them up. They'll have nothing, no response for that. That they die not. Again, it's similar there. The, the big difference, again, is that Yah is identifying the children of the disobedient, not the rebels. He's not saying they're all rebels. He's only saying... Uh, you, parents, are the disobedient ones, and your children will have this witness to them, and perhaps they will not die because they will not murmur as you did. They will obey. They'll be more obedient, perhaps. Verse 11, we have an omission of Aaron. Again, he's not included. Feels bad to be Aaron. So did they, versus so did he. So again, we're talking about Moses and Aaron. Were given commandments and they did it versus only Moses no 
Aaron was very much involved as well, and it's not fair to omit him from this narrative because he did participate. He plays a big role as well in this history of Israel. Verse 12 says, Behold, we are cut off. We are destroyed. We are consumed. Versus, behold, we die. We perish. We all perish. That's redundant. Here we can see, yes, we are cut off, meaning we are destroyed and we are consumed. This is uh, the children of Israel talking to Moses, expressing their fear. Verse 13 is the last verse we're going to look at. It says, Everyone that touches the tabernacle of Yah dies. Shall we die utterly? And then in the Masoretic it says, Whosoever comes anything near to the tabernacle of Yah shall die. Shall we be consumed with the dying? So it seems that the Septuagint is saying, uh, specifying a person, an individual, a, a creature, a human being, or a living being, versus whosoever, uh, actually that is a living being as well, but it, it does say anything near, so that could mean any object, perhaps, because it says anything, and then it talks about in the Septuagint, shall we die utterly, so this is just being consumed, this is being destroyed, versus being consumed with dying, as opposed to being consumed with other methods. So that's all I have to present to you today. Uh, we can see in this chapter, uh, I think the biggest differences here are the identifier of the children of the disobedient versus the rebels, which seem to put everyone under the same umbrella. And that's just not the case here. And the title of this video, the title will be uh, Aaron's Rod, Aaron's Rod that blossomed. So thank you very much for your time. May Yah bless you and make you a prosperous. Uh, until next time, uh, thank, you all, thank you all for your support. Please uh, give this video a like. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. It uh, means a lot to me, all your support. So thank you very much. Uh, shalom, peace be unto you. Until next time, we'll look at Numbers chapter 18. This is Jack Knight signing out for Secrets Revealed. The Holy Bible. Shalom and peace be unto you.